the RPG Maker General Podcast, or the RPG MGP. Hey, Robin, how much editing I got? Cody, you, you have, have a lot of editing, editing to do, Cody. Cody. Thank you for tuning in to the RPG Maker General Podcast with the RPG MGP, your one-stop shop for everything RPG Maker. This is Cody, a.k.a. Marpix, and with me today are Blue Sky Robin. Hello, it's me. Fellow RPG MG Dev, Mono. I'm not a disease, I'm a person. Hello. <laughs> and joining us from Evil Guacamole Gaming, it's Brad. Hooray! It's me. Yay! Uh, so, yeah. So, Cody, who are these two people here? I just, I'm not familiar I with them at all. <laughs> I just introduced them, but sure, yes, please, Mono, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, well, uh, I'm a new-ish game developer. I, I use that title very uh, loosely. I lurk around on a certain forum about certain things. That sounds actually really bad. RPG MG, <laughs> specifically. Yeah, it sounded wanna, like... Wanna, uh... I don't want to leave that open to interpretation to, to, for people. Like, oh. So yeah, I'm making a game Life of Mono. I don't think it's autobiographical. Mono is just my moniker, I guess. And it's coming along. Excellent. All right, now Brad, how about you introduce everyone to, to yourself? Or yourself to everyone? Just flip a coin, yeah. I don't care. I can, I can do that. I am Devil's Avocado. Uh, of Evil Guacamole Gaming. It's a pun, people. I run a YouTube channel, and I also play a lot of games, because that's, that's how you do the, 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 the YouTube, is you play the games. We've been going strong for over a year, very consistent, although this week and next week has been our first big gap, but that's because we unfortunately lost our, our biggest contributor, Maggie uh, Davidson, last week to a drunk driver. So we are in hiatus currently, but I decided to come on here because, you know, when I'm not running the show, it's not that hard. I learned I can deal with that. Yeah. So on that somber, shitty note, Let's get to a podcast. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, man. So, so actual big news for Yanfly this week. Yanfly has officially thrown in the towel. He he can't do it by himself anymore. Yanfly being a big scripter for RPG Maker. He's doing away with tips and tricks. He's going to focus on plugins. And he has two new helpers. And their names are Chicky and Tigress. And their icons are a little chick and a little tiger. And they're just as cute and fluffy as Yanfly is. If you haven't clicked the YouTube link, please do. <laughs> okay, so can I theorize that these two newcomers are actually AIs made by Anfly in the spare time? <gasps> Conspiracy! Conspiracy! Like, like yeah, Yanfly in his spare time made two Skynets to make plugins for him. Would you I'm have actually... to make separate Skynets for this? <laughs> <laughs> really you just well, create one master AI that creates its little dumber AIs that become smarter maybe Yanfly was always Skynet and this is it growing oh no yeah but but like in a, on a serious note I'm happy that he can like take a load off and start playing people's games now I guess <laughs> is that something he used to do he actually played video games at one point well, you know, a lot of people keep sending him games, apparently, like, you know, with his scripts. So I'm sure he's, like, excited to have the time to actually try them now. Oh, I'm sure. Do you think he would do reviews of games? <laughs> I really don't, because he all his videos are just, like, text overlays on his uh, videos, and they're extraordinarily long. I've voiced my grievances about this uh, <laughs> before. It's just oh, like, yeah. I don't want to watch a 14-minute video of these five parameters. Give me the text dump so I can speed read it. Let's get it on. But it would be really cool to see him talk about, you know, games. Yeah. Would, no, the would, secret... you watch, would you watch his videos if, like, someone, like, re-uploaded it but gave their own voice for it? <sighs> Probably. <laughs> Welcome I to would... another Tips and Tricks, everybody. <laughs> I would take ums and oohs and lip smacks. Just oh, do it faster. So <laughs> like the uh, like in Final Fantasy Tactics, I'm gonna jump. Oh, word bleeps. <laughs> yeah, like like blips and bloops. I think it would be better if you read it 
and sped it up to where it sounded like bloops, but it was actually the words. <laughs> so like how Okami did it or something? Oh, yeah. There was also the Kotor uh, approach to their alien language where it, they kind of made it sound like they had all this um, <laughs> Star Wars language going on, but I have a distinct feeling that it was all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, when you hear the third Twilight and you're like, I think he said this before, but I've never met him, and he's saying the same things that this other guy did on Two Planets Away. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. You expected them to invent a whole new language, like you think you're Star Trek, you just get you just get handed Klingon. Last week I saw the Klingon Rickroll, it was great. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Someone translated yeah, and I, sung this thing. I'm, okay. I'm amused at the concept and I kinda wanna see it. Well, j- allow me just one second, my friend. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, the, the trick with Yanfly's videos is every text box takes 10 seconds. So what I do is I just keep pressing L, which advances a video 10 seconds. Like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> I mean, Yanfly, if you're listening, I'll voice your videos for free. I'll give you one video a week for free. <laughs> Just to get someone's voice on the damn thing. I'm telling you, it's a good idea. Yeah, and Fly, would you actually want Cody's voice on it, though? Like, seriously, <laughs> listen to him. Well, hey there, YouTubers! It's time to go over another plug-in! <laughs> hey. Fucking goddammit, Cody. That's even worse than the one I made, and I tried to make it sound bad. <laughs> Cody, what, a, what about your ASMR voice? I, did you have one of those that maybe you could do and help people get to sleep while listening to Yan Fly's genius stuff and maybe subconsciously grain into them and slowly and apply to, like Jesus make Christ. Cody the leader of the world. <laughs> One day, everybody, I will be king of the world and you will recognize my greatness as the best podcaster on the planet. Um in the meantime we're gonna we're... go over this Yan Fly script and hey diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon, yes. <laughs> God damn it. Are are we playing Hidden Hitler or something? Secret Hitler? <laughs> whatever, that, whatever that game's called. Jeez. I don't even know the rules of that game. You think, you think you've done a really good job, but then there's just a bunch of game devs that randomly will just go, Hello world! Out of nowhere and don't understand why. What? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> One person got it. Hello World uh, at least used to be the standard, like, first program everyone made. Oh, right, um, right, right. Display yeah, Cody, message, remember that, that lesson you failed with programming? <laughs> programming <laughs> 101 in first JavaScript. Classes. Yeah. Programming 101 failed because I forgot to, up- to update the, <laughs> the program. <laughs> I can't believe you remember that, Robin. That was a year ago. <laughs> That was great, though. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for Yan Fly's uh, Hello World plugin. Yeah. Who's who's got the little kid? That would be me. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me at least uh, I keep keep going. Okay. Holy guacamole! Ha ha ha! February twenty fourth, two thousand sixteen is when I brought up that stupid story, Robin, and you remembered it. Uh, yeah, of course, because it's the defining feature of Cody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, God did not want me to program. Either that or I'm just really lazy, because JavaScript, you know, like every time I boot up the computer, hey, a new version of Java is ready to be installed. That's great. You keep, you've you worked well anyhow. I don't need the update. Screw you. And then one day I decided to, to try and code in Java, because I figured I should learn to code something, and... I tried following the instructions on Java's website for Hello World, and it broke because it was for the most updated version. <laughs> um, but I did not find this out until a long time later. <laughs> like, I just uh... thought, okay, God has come down and chosen me as the man who shall not program. I shall listen and obey. Goodbye. Should have started with a real useful programming language, like HTML. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah, no, nobody, pretty <laughs> much nobody uses HTML anymore, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm still going I'm through sure puberty at 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh sure man, he's turned into a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> this is what happens when you get a house built in 1920 that basically has no locks because all the doors use skeleton keys and they don't give you a skeleton key with the house. Mm. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> I can't. I literally can't. You can... go to the local blacksmith for one. <laughs> if we had a local blacksmith, they could probably make one. I think Walgreens has one in there next to their <laughs> uh, picture printer guy. When was the last time anyone walked into a Walgreens? Like, like true story. Like, not that long ago. I I get prescriptions there all the time. Oh, okay. Although usually drive through, but I mean. So no one's I, ever been time. inside. I I have at times in case like um shit goes down with like insurance companies. Not. I thought you were gonna say in case of a zombie apocalypse, you'd stay in Walgreens. Oh, that probably would work pretty well. You know, everybody knows that you can cure everything with, like, some bandages and shit, because that's, that's how RP, uh, you know, not RPGs, but first-person shooters always work that way. <laughs> Get a first aid kit, like, you cure, like, 12 bullet wounds, you know? Yeah. Um, bandages and pills. Nice. And they've got lots of them. Oh, yeah, and they got plenty of pills. And, and they've got and, more than uh, one way to celebrate a birthday. They've, they've got, you know, the, the toys hanging on that one rack, and they're not overpriced because it's the apocalypse. They're all free. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd really uh, screw okay. someone over, like, here, take these. They're Tums. They're like, oh, my stomach hurts a little less, but uh, that bullet wound still hurts. <laughs> oh, jeez. All uh, right, back to RPG Maker for a second. Um, right, right. <laughs> so our friend Nana is working on the game Virgo vs. the Zodiac, and there's a demo out now, and by the time this podcast is released, uh, it will hopefully be a, a more fleshed-out and proofread demo, which is what she's hoping to do. Yeah, I've seen the screenshots. It's it looks cool. That was one of the games that kind of inspired me too to try making my own, like with art, not RTP. I saw that and I was like, "Fuck, that's good. I think I can do that, but yeah. in grayscale, and not look like that at all." <laughs> <laughs> not that's not a diss on the game, but just like you know, as an artist, you find your own kind of style. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just a little weird hearing like, "Oh, I can do it like that," except not. <laughs> I do like Nana's style, though. Like her, her pixel art is really clean, and I enjoy the the colorizations. It's very pastel. Yeah, mm. it's kind of soft on the eyes, which is really nice. Yeah, I find sometimes that you can put really hard contrasting colors, and it's kind of like. Whew. But this, I like it. It's like soft and nice. I think it kind of it's like it juxtaposes. Probably, the, I haven't played a demo, but it looks like it's a pretty warlike game with the battles yeah one one lady army yep you're a one woman army out to either kill or befriend the rest of the zodiac uh, oh, well so she they... screamed heresy so i think that's great <laughs> what's this uh warhammer 40k yeah pretty much except with cute girls so this is the 4chan version of warhammer <laughs> 40k no, she's, just, she's just a valkyrie <laughs> And, I mean, you are fighting amongst the stars because the Zodiac are constellations, after all. True. It does look pretty spacey, too. Oh, I'm looking through, and that that's a half-naked lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing observation. But the portraits are really, really good. Like, the, just the in-game oh, like, yeah. walk-around art's really good. And then you see the portraits, and you're like, holy crap. This is really good. So we ready to move on to the main topic here? Yeah. All right. Oh, ready, steady. Right. What was the topic again, Cody? Are you serious? <laughs> no, Are I'm not. I'm trying to mess with you. Jeez. God damn on. The system is how to make a perfect rice pudding. No. It's about uh, battle systems again. Uh, yes. The last time we covered battle systems was uh, over half a year ago. Uh, we kept it rather simple, you know... Uh, turn-based versus active time battle, a couple different other methods. We didn't feel that we covered everything last time, and it's been long enough that we want to go over it again. And let me open with a game that we have all played, but no one played it for the battle system. Because RuneScape doesn't have a great battle system. <laughs> it's it's auto-attack, and then which attack are you using? Probably strong. Are, are your prayers active? Yes. 
How many sharks do you have? All the sharks. Let's go. I, I'm going to have to disagree with you because uh, you said that we'd all played it, and unfortunately, I have not. <gasps> wow. <clears throat> RuneScape's uh, an MMO, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, right, okay. So neither of you have yeah. played RuneScape. <laughs> Fuck, he found us out, no. Brad. Let's run. Let's Fuck. get out of here. Jesus I actually, Christ. I actually did, did play RuneScape for a little while. Uh, the only MMO Merkaper that I've ever played, uh, and it's not even a real Merkaper, is uh, Guild Wars. I was uh, hoping for Maple Story. The first one. Does the first Guild Wars even exist? <laughs> I, I mean, it it did exist, like I mean, fifteen like, years ago. All I heard about Guild Wars is the second one, so I don't even know if Guild Wars One is a real thing. <laughs> yes, it was. I remember I made a a uh, I think it was a, a monk elementalist because I was into Shaolin Showdown at the time. Hmm. <laughs> Uh-huh. It didn't work out well. It was purely a like, hey, this is like that show that I'm enjoying and it's like this is a shitty combination. I don't know if Guild War Two is is also does the like combo classes or whatever. Not to my knowledge, oh. no. You just you just pick a class and then you're off to the races. Amazing. Yeah, what about RuneScape Cody? What about it? It's what was so great about it. Definitely not the combat. But everything about the combat is what made it interesting because you either had to buy or craft your runes after you leveled up your magic. You could fletch your arrows or buy them. You probably manufactured all your equipment by mining the ore and then smithing it yourself. So everything leading up to it, you know, the, it's more about the process than the actual combat. Because with RuneScape, it's auto attack. Basically what happens is you're locked into combat with another enemy and it's... Bleh, like you're just attacking each other with a really with a really silly animation and you're only allowed to break combat after three attacks or until one of you dies with most enemies from the smallest goblin to the biggest demon all they do is attack you and that's it um then there are some enemies that that can do a ranged attack and you can do your own via magic or arrows but if an enemy has line of sight to you they're running at you, and you're going to get into the, the two little paper dolls mashing into each other combat rather quickly. It sounds huh. like Harvest Moon has more gameplay. I can appreciate the concept that, like, honestly, given the way that that sounds, it would have been just better to literally just have a very quick animation of what happened. Consider along the, like, not actually controlling combat, it's been like five years but like uh final fantasy 13 otherwise known as the final fantasy hallway <laughs> um i actually did kind of like that combat i uh, i will admit uh unpopular opinion basically you were just changing the way the ai tried to fight every now and then which considering most of what you do in rpgs is just spam basic attack type of thing it's not that unreasonable to make an RPG that's basically just auto thing, if you can make it interesting, which I think it did a little bit. That didn't excuse other shit about that game, but I thought it was a it was interesting. It, it tried something fairly new. That's kind of interesting, because that makes me think of the real difference between something that's more, I guess I don't want to say live action, but like real time versus something that's uh, turn based. Something that's live action, I think, has to rely on attacks or, like, uh, an auto attack or, like, a basic attack because you don't have time to, like, sit and think and strategize unless you have a few, you know, basic skills. But the turn-based combat kind of lets you think and plan and have all these skills to choose from and, like, gives you that time to make that choice. Certainly when you have multiple people, you have to whittle down what can happen you see that change with the with 10 over to 12 like 12 had all the auto except for the your your one person that you controlled it, it was interesting that like your combat improved most not by equipment but by when you got new ways to control the artificial intelligence uh, i never finished 12 so I, I don't know if it 
holds true through the whole game. I don't even know where I stopped. Uh, Did you stop by the Marlboros? That's where I no? stopped. I think there was a desert or something. I don't know if I even saw all the characters or something. I've seen more Final Fantasy twelve characters by playing Record Keeper than I did by... Um... <laughs> Fucking God damn it! That's great. The... That's great. Like, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm playing Record Keeper. I'm like, who the fuck are these characters? <laughs> but still, it's like, I don't, I don't remember fighting these or being these people. Because <laughs> you only had like six main characters in 12. Yeah, like... I remember Van, who is the false main character. Like, they're like, hey, this is going to be your main character. Nah, psych, he's a shit. You know, um, he's unimportant and stupid. Um, yeah. And then there's Pinello or whatever, who is, hey, this is going to be the main female character. Nope, also stupid. I'll fight also you stupid on that and one. unimportant. He's not stupid. Huh? Did, did this change after uh, later in the game? Because, like... like... Oh, no, no, she still does nothing, but she's better than Van because she's a girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like, she... Also, she just it came off as more interesting than Van, who is, yeah, like... Exactly. Like, trying to be the, the town folk protagonist. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, you know what's more interesting? The fucking royals that are having to deal with, like, secession and whatever is going on that are actually driving the plot. Back back on topic here. I don't think that auto-attack is the right way to have an RPG, because it, it does create more, more action on the screen, but it also does not make that action important. And I saw this first, like, playing shoot-'em-ups in, in an arcade, because you take a game like Galaga... You can only have two bullets on screen at any time. That means that those two bullets are very important. And if you kill something, you can fire again. But if you missed and your shot goes all the way to the end of the screen before you can fire again. And the game is balanced completely around that thought of if you're skilled, if you're good, you're going to go far. Whereas with, you know, someone took this idea and said, well... You know, why can't you just shoot as much as you want? And then we have later games like Raiden Fighters or 1945 or, or something other like that where you just hold down the button and you auto-fire, but enemies also take six times longer to kill because the game just assumes you're going to fire all these bullets. I have thought before, it's like, is there a reason to not be shooting in games like that? You just need to have an auto-fire. It's no longer a matter of choosing when to fire well, it's only if you have infinite ammo. If you didn't have infinite ammo, you'd be a little more conservative. Man, can you imagine? <clears throat> have they ever done that with shoot 'em up where you had limited ammo? Wow. What, yeah. what would that be like? Shoot 'em up sniper? Only with your powered up weapons. Like, well, yeah, I, think, that... I think you have to have a base like a, like metal slug. You had like your pistol, but then you could get your other weapons and those had limited ones. But as far as everything being I don't think so. Unless you had a melee attack, but I don't think planes have melee attacks. Not usually. You don't get a <laughs> melee attack in Duck Hunt. Uh, planes okay. with melee attacks? God damn, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Not to bring it back to Warhammer 40k, it's like, drive close, I want to hit them with my sword. I will cut all these enemy planes with my blade wings. Yes. That's Sounds a Pokemon like move, right? Enemy. Razor wing? This is like, true. Why hasn't there been a Pokemon shoot 'em up? Like a, a Raiden like Pokemon game. It's called Pokemon Snap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the camera. I think you could and... throw rocks at them too. Yeah. <laughs> and they die. Or evolve, depending. If you see where I'm going with that, like by putting in auto attack. The developers now have to work around that and assume that the enemy is losing HP all the time, which means now they have to become an HP sponge. And I don't think developers pay a whole lot of attention to their balancing when they have something like auto-attack in it, because then they're not saying, okay, an attack does this much, and the player's committing this many resources to doing that attack. It's just, eh, this, this'll do. They won't be able to kill him in under three minutes. We'll be fine. I think the uh, one of the few games that I've played that does this well is like uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, mostly because it was kind of more like a D and D, 
It was more like dice roll based where you had the animations going. It was like a little slower. Behind the scenes, you know, the mechanics of the game was like checking your attack versus their defense and agility. So in that case, I think it works kind of well because it defaults to auto attack, but that doesn't always mean they're taking damage. You could just suck really hard and (laughs) they could miss, you know, all the time. Uh, But then you could choose like your whatever special attacks or abilities or force powers. I think that worked okay. All right. It's true, that was based on the uh, third edition, and they just made a Star Wars version. I don't know if that was the, the Star Wars D20 exactly, uh, but it essentially was actually turn-based. It just, like, auto-turn-based. So maybe that's a part of the difference. There still was a limit to every certain amount of seconds. You could only get so many turns type of thing. Yeah, and you could get more attacks if you sped up your uh, your like uh, speed or something. If you use like a force power or if you dual wielded, then you got an extra attack. But it wasn't like mash the buttons, get more attacks. Yeah, right. But like I I feel like auto attacking in games is like really really lame on its own. Like a lot of MMOs in the past did it, and it was dull as fuck. So you have to spice it up with like, oh, you can use skills while auto attacking or whatever, right? That's what some MMOs did. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Yeah. And even that, they still have like a two or three second like actual real time, like a uh, yeah, like a cooldown, right? Yeah. So you can just spam every single ability, like yeah. Could. yeah. But like some games are like. No, use this skill all the time. Replace your auto attack. And it was like, what the fuck is this system? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Ragnarok Online. Fucking playing a swordsman. Boring as hell because I have to bash everything dead. <laughs> that was Maple Story for me. Well, you start getting into the, the auto clicker games at this point. Uh huh. Which, well, I mean, that's an interesting, like the inevitable conclusion kind of thing of this kind of autoplay. I don't know if you've ever played. I, I've just tried out different ones on my phone of games that, that have RPG elements to them, but they're, they're clickers. There's, well, there's also the notorious Sakura clicker. Not that I'd play that, which I can't actually say because I have a video of it on my, my channel. <laughs> no, you um, can say it. We don't care that you're lying. <laughs> explicitly through your Oh, teeth. right. I have you never me. played Sakura Clicker, the game with anime boobles and clicking and clicking. But, like, it, it kind of breaks down, like, where auto attack eventually gets to, where it's just, like, everything is exponential scaled. Everything is loading up new auto features. At that point, it's not even a game necessarily anymore like there's no objective to complete other than how far does the rabbit hole go and you kind of lose it lose a story you have like a plot that never ends like it's the world of warcraft where it just never ends (laughs) it's a game that never (laughs) ends fucking god damn it no don't start that here (laughs) don't start that we'll never finish the podcast at that rate right So we're all agreed that auto-attacking is a terrible gameplay thing, right? Yeah, it takes. Control, I think so. It, it yeah. takes control away from the player and makes them like the middle manager who's looking at the cooldown bars. You are no longer the character. You are just kind of their their manager. I think and... maybe the only exception is if if the if the battles are so short that it doesn't really impact the battles, like really oh, short I battles. Know... Yeah, I I know a system that does auto attacking just fine because all the battles are short. It's called Half Minute Hero, and all the <laughs> battles are fucking like less than two seconds usually. Yep, and it's great. Yeah, no, Half Minute Hero is awesome. Like once you get the, have you guys ever played Half Minute Hero? No, no I haven't. Okay, the premise of Half-Minute Hero is you have a little RPG map and you have to finish that RPG in thirty seconds. You have a town that sells equipment, you go out, you grind a little bit, you kill these enemies, you get equipment, you go to the stronger area, kill these enemies. Maybe you do the optional thing way the fuck over here if you have time. You kill the boss, end game, hooray, you win, on to the next map. And you just keep doing maps until the time's up? No, 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 each each map is is 30 seconds. Each map is 30 seconds. Oh, okay, I see. 
Huh. 30 seconds. Holy fuck, that's a quick game. <laughs> I mean, like, there are, like, ways to reset the 30 seconds without changing map. But, like, yeah, it's great. It goes through a lot of RPG tropes, and it's funny. Huh. It's fascinating. Is that, like, a Flash-based game, or is it, like, a full-on... <laughs> Oh, it's like, a legit game. game. You can find it on Steam. It's great. Three quarter of a minute hero. It's, it's a sequel, right? <laughs> That'd be fun. Expand to forty five seconds. DLC oh, gets man. you to a minute. <laughs> <laughs> damn, goddamn, pay to win bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half minute hero. The the combat in that game is not the point at all. Much like RuneScape, you know. In half minute hero, it's about the characters. It's about equipping silly hats. To optimize your stats, it's about finding secrets. They acknowledge that combat is part of an RPG, but it's not the part you're playing for. So they just kind of, they zoom you through it so you can just have the, the quirky fun. Yeah, seriously, the the combat, quote-unquote, is just run into the enemy and then hope one of you dies. <laughs> and in fact, th there's a way to make it go faster, and that's just, you make your character run faster, that's it. <laughs> yep. One other game that I feel like is relevant uh, to the the auto battle, Star Ocean Second Story. I know of it, but like I don't know details about it. It's a solid game with tons of story, lots of endings and everything. The combat can be a little wonky, and I think that the whole balancing thing is is an issue. Is you get multiple characters, but it is absolute full real time and. You get to control 2D sprites on a on a 2D plane. Like, it, it looks 3D, but you... Well, I guess you can jump, too, so I guess it is 3D. <laughs> um, but your other characters have to be controlled by AI, and you can swap which character you're controlling, but, of course, you know, a lot of it's done elsewhere, and so, like, you could be struggling to beat a hero, one character, by yourself, and then realize that all of the other characters are suddenly rushing over to help you because... You're the idiot that can't do anything as fast as they can. Mm. But they also spam all the, the MP attacks and use up all your items type of thing. So it, it, that's always a big trouble with auto is when auto uses up your non-replenishable resources type of thing. Yeah, the, the can... AI never knows what to do in a battle. Like, oh, I guess it's time to buff people. Oh, crap, they didn't give you a good buff at all. Oh, crap, I should heal this guy, and then heals the wrong guy. Let's use all your elixirs, shall we? Yeah, the AI isn't thinking long-term. They're thinking, man, you could really use an elixir. Here, have one. No! In fairness, it did have a significant amount of controlling AI. You know what that makes me think of? What about Secret of Mana? Go Since on. most people didn't play with three people in the same room. Normally what I did, because the game gives you the, the boy, the girl, and the sprite, and the boy literally can only sword. So if you're playing by yourself, you should be him, and then you use the X button to access the magic menus of the other two. And it had that little, like, grid where you could have them be, like, close to the enemy and attacking or, like, or, like backing away, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, because I, I used the, the tactics thing a little bit, and I always had the sprite and the girl as far away as possible so they wouldn't complicate things. I'd be the only thing that got attacked, and that would simplify the curing process and, and all the other stuff that, that was going on. Yeah, and I think that actually gets to, to part of where an auto can work all right, is if where you can still pause things in an otherwise active battle. Hmm. And then access menus to do things. Which I guess when you think about it, Kingdom Hearts is that way too. Although, I mean, people are always talking about how shitty Donald is at using the right magic. Um, <laughs> I don't recall having too much problem with that. But at the same time, it's, it's been a long time since I've played Kingdom Hearts. I don't know, man. I, I prefer having Donald around because like, Goofy's like underwhelming when I played back in the day. There was some option, like, real late in the game, like, um, some bonus that he could get that made him, like, stupid powerful, like, <laughs> that he actually suddenly became really useful. Oh, yeah, yeah, that shield tornado thing is fucking great. All right, so, like Robin said a while back, we can all agree that auto attack is not the, the best way. I mean, are you guys <laughs> saying that it's viable? 
Yeah, I think I the only viable way. About combat. Okay, now before okay before I before I ask this question again, we're at an hour into the podcast. They right. normally run about an hour and a half. I want out of each of you one sentence: Is auto attack still viable? Who goes first? I'll go first. Shit, I lost my sentence. <laughs> so did you. <laughs> To me, the only viable auto attack system is if it's under uh, D&D rules. I think auto attack can be viable if you have certain amount of options that interrupt the active time battle. Anytime that you have a full auto battle type thing and it's just not going to be interesting. Robin? All right. Auto battle works if you don't care about the battles. Yeah. I'm like, I can't <laughs> I can't think of a good game where auto battle is a thing and battles are important. Like, seriously. Yeah. Jeez. I agree with Robin, it's shit. Moving on. So, because of uh, how this is running, I'm gonna jump to Robin, because Robin played Legend of Legaia back in the day, and it had a very unique system regarding its combat. It had a, a meter, which you used for inputs, and the longer you played, the more inputs you could have, and your equipment altered it. Uh, but that's me talking. Robin, take it away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Because, like, Legend of Legaia, I could talk about it for hours, but we don't have hours, so, yeah. <laughs> Basically, in Legend of Legaia, you a lot of the good stuff was in the attack option, because you, you basically played three martial artists, and it was cool, and it was great. It was awesome. When you chose to attack, you had to input a combo. It was like high, low, left, or right. And that was where you were going to hit the enemy. It made sense because if you were attacking low and you were fighting a flying enemy, you wouldn't hit them low because they're flying. Hmm. And like depending on your input, you could basically get like moves called arts. So right, left, right would be a spinning attack or something like that. And all these new techniques were, like, stronger than just hitting the left attack all, a whole bunch. Hmm. Yeah, and then later on in the game, you can learn more techniques, and then you can string them together, and it's it was great, like, when you do it. In that game, they also make defense really good. Like, you were talking earlier about how, how defense is shit in most games. Not in Legend of Ligaia. It's great in Legend of Ligaia. Like, it had, like, the most important parts of defending in that game is, like, it cuts damage, which, you know, the usual thing. But normal attacks from enemies get evaded more often when you're defending. And, like, what the fuck was the rest of it? Oh, yeah. It restored your AP, which you needed to do your attack techniques. And mm -hmm. your attack bar got longer when you did your defense. All of those, when you're doing a defense. So it provided some utility for the next turn instead of just flatly reducing damage. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this was in the pre-show or not, but something that bugged me about the defend command, especially in, like, I believe it was Dragon Quest, is, one, there was no reason to use it when you could just kill the enemy. Two, your mages had low defense anyway, who are the people you'd want to survive a heart attack, and three, it had no priority, and your slow mages would never get to defend up in time before they finally got killed. Yeah, yeah. That's not the case in Legend of Ligaia. Defend is great, because, like, even if you, like, didn't get hit at all when you defended, you had something for your next attack. That's really cool. Oh, so it's kind of like a Super Saiyan, like, scream, like, ha, where you're powering up and you're getting ready to go to <laughs> that, your next that's, transformation. Actually, that's exactly <clears throat> it. Because, like, it's not called Defend in the game. It's called Spirit. And that's exactly what they do when you use it. <laughs> they scream, they get stronger, and they get... Yeah, I'm not nice. kidding. That's exactly what it is. Charging your key. Yeah, yeah. Ah, shit. That's amazing. Man, I miss that game. So... This does make me think of one other game, bringing it back to Squaresoft, uh, Xenogears. That's the original one, if I recall correctly. Uh, the one on the PlayStation. Yep. It was not as robust as this, but it did have a system of, of like, you could 
input a variety of three different types of attack, and they could uh, eventually turn into combos. I remember playing the demo of this and, like, even just getting out a note card just to, like, I tried out every possible combination that was available to me and, like, writing down, like, what each one did because I just thought it was so interesting to have such a variety of attacks. It usually just depended on the type of how much defense that the, the enemy had, what would be the best option. It was still interesting to have a lot of options available to you. And uh, those were generally all free as long as you had them unlocked. Because unlike in the demo, like you had to wait for your character to level up quite a bit to be able to do all those different things. Which I was bummed about when I got the game. I'm like, all right, ready to do all these combos. It's like, you have no combos. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like but the FF7 that... demo where you, you couldn't summon Leviathan with Eris right away? <laughs> I didn't play the 7 demo, but I did play 8. Um, the 8 demo was one that I... And it, it, they didn't explain almost anything about the story in the demo. So mm. uh, the, the, the one thing about Zeno that I'm thinking about is there was a defend command. And when you were a person, the defend command was generally useless, like, like always. But defend when you were in your gears, like in your giant mechs, could be useful because it conserved fuel. And if you ran out of fuel, you were fucked. <laughs> so I think the the best thing that a defend can do is definitely, definitely do something, right? Like, not, there's a chance you can take less damage or there's a chance you can heal something. But you want something definite out of your defend. Because you're choosing it because you're choosing not to attack. You're choosing not to inflict damage. Yeah. Yeah, you need a, a <clears throat> solid reward, a, a tangible reward for doing it. Like in Bravely Default, where if you defend, then you get to do an extra action the next time. You know, so the game rewards you for, you know, reducing the damage you take, stacking your turns, and then unleashing hell. Uh, I'm thinking about the, the Record Keeper version, because like, I'm like, well attack is useless for my mages but that kind of goes to the point that maybe it, that's a design problem that your mages can't do a thing like the reason why your mages can't do anything is that they have to use their abilities and unless you invest your resources into making your characters able to use your abilities a whole bunch more you're gonna run out of them by the time you're through a dungeon which you don't want to do because you need them the most for the you know, the big bad at the end of the dungeon. But that kind of speaks to a general problem with the game itself. It's like, why why did they have these characters? Like, I, at first, I just didn't use mages because it's like, well, the spells aren't that much more powerful, plus they can't do anything unless they're using the spells. So the, it generally is a design flaw. If, if you're choosing to use Defend... It means the game is designed to be boring. <laughs> I think um, if you integrate a little more story and character into Defend, it could work in the old school way. Simply because if you have like a back and forth between the characters and the bad guy, and the bad guy says, Are you ready for this? And then everyone defends, and then they're very clearly ready for what he's about to do. But... My methodology never got past that because the old school defend, you know, unless, you know, you're getting that tangible reward, there's no reason to use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I go? Can I go? <laughs> yes. I think the problem with defend is like, yeah, I think Cody mentioned it. It's not guaranteed to do anything. For example, one out of your three guys defends. There's no guarantee that the enemy is going to, like, go, hey, that guy's defending, let's attack him. <laughs> right? They could very well be like, oh, that guy's defending, let's attack his friends. <laughs> oh, that so your defend the... is fucking pointless. Right? Yeah. yeah. I could see defend would be more useful if the AI for the enemy was intelligent enough to be like, oh, hey, you know, you know it would be a good idea he's defending let's not bother attacking him type of thing and then that would be even more reason why defending would be useful like you'd actually gain you'd be even safer with it it would be an yeah. implicit defense because the enemies wouldn't go after you they'd go after someone else 
Yeah. Hmm. That's an interesting take on it. But like, what I mean is like, you use defend, and there's no guarantee that it'll actually do anything if all it does is reduce damage, right? I mean, yeah. like in in Legend of Legaia, they made it worth it because your your attack bar got longer, so you had more chances to do your techniques and do a lot of damage the next turn. Yeah, you're basically charging up. Yeah. Now, what if you had a defend where? I guess the only the only thing I could think of is like if this is like a technological kind of sci-fi thing, but you had a defend that a character did, and it was more like a party-wide buff. Like they lost their turn, but like everyone else got defense or got uh, I don't know damage taken off, or they charged their bar or whatever. Yeah, that mm. that is the only time I used a shield in the first Final Fantasy Legend is when I got the last shield, the Aegis Shield, because when you use it, it says party was covered in a barrier. So by sacrificing that one person's turn, you're protecting the entire party from damage. Yeah. I think the issue is, like, Defend really needs more uses uh, out of it other than just cut damage. It's interesting to think about it. I know it's kind of expanding beyond the RPG realm, but it kind of still functions this way. Think about, uh, for those familiar with Overwatch, think about Reinhardt as a character. Like, his entire thing is that he defends a party. But he could he could attack, but his defense is a very active thing. Like, it's used to help everyone push forward. So... I don't know precisely how that would translate into RPGs, but that it certainly makes sense that you you could have a character that defends everyone. Uh, uh, there is the cover material back in and other cover mechanics from Final Fantasy um, mm-hmm. did stuff a bit like that. It never worked that great because it still meant like somebody was getting hurt. If you had a lot of characters that kept getting killed, it it would make sense. But Final Fantasy, I never had any characters that like, it's like, oh, they're always getting killed. <laughs> well, didn't you say in a record keeper that the wizards were really, really squishy? Oh yeah, they're very, very squishy. There's a few kind of in between. Like, there's a few mages that actually like, they use swords. Their attack is still fairly low, but you can, you can get a few swords that boost your magic as well as attack so you can kind of make some viable actually does some damage aside from the the magic there is commands that do stuff like that that in in uh record keeper where it's like you do this and then all of the physical attacks are directed to that character and that that can be pretty useful although back row is really really handy in in record keeper it really protects your your mages quite a bit mm. yeah that's um, that's something we haven't ever talked about because i remember it in final fantasy 7 at least you could have characters in either the front row or the back row and the enemies could be in the front or back row and if you didn't have spells to fling the best way to to mitigate you know attacking from the back row is to have like the long range materia yeah yeah mm-hmm. or if you had uh, uh yuffie or vincent or Barrett, who all generally, or the the hair clip on Red Thirteen, the the one rare ranged weapon he had, I guess it just sprung out of his head or something. <laughs> Has a mind of its own and just launches at people. Yep. Uh, man. I still oh. want to talk about. There's one game like Wild Arms. Ha! Huh, big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Wild Arms Three had the thing. Cause like you know, Wild West. You have guns, and guns use bullets. So if you run out and your guns have no bullets, then what the fuck are you doing, right? You throw your gun. <laughs> no, you smack them with a gun, but it does a lot less damage. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, guess guess what you need to do to reload? Yeah, that's right. You defend. You know, the uh... logical thing. Oh, man. So defend yeah, is so a little bit more like find cover. In... Yeah. 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 So not only are you like like increasing your defense, you're resetting your attack to the maximum damage cuz like you're reloading your gun. Yeah, I mm. see that makes sense. That's another that's a good use for defend. The last idea I had for defend is if it's not really like defend, I guess in a sense, but it's like 
I guess I think of it as prepare. So you you take your stance and you're not attacking, obviously. But if you get attacked, you have like a really high chance to counter, or maybe you counter like a hundred percent. Because if you think about it, if you're defending, you're you're not like going on the charge, so you're probably standing still. So you're much more aware and keen of your surroundings. So if it got you more into like a like you're prepared to be hit by an attack, but you also like counter. So that way, at least if you're not doing damage on that turn, you get attacked, then you can do damage. It's it's not really like a for sure damage because maybe someone won't attack you, but at least you can still do damage. Now riddle me know. this: Why would you use that instead of just pressing attack and smacking them in the face? Uh, well, if you have a counter system, it's possible. Like in tactics, like if you attack them, then you get countered. You have to and have and they have skill. low HP. You have to have another skill that attracts enemy attacks to you. Just yeah, like put put on <clears throat> your sword magnet armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, usually those are considered things like uh, uh, taunts or something. Yeah. Uh, in the the Mercaber term of uh, 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 gaining aggro, you, yeah. you, you piss everybody off and then you defend. But you don't do any damage to them usually, unless you ha unless you had something, unless you did something else that did that. I could you if you did. You start your counter stance. If you did both those together, I could, I could see defense being, being useful. Like if you're like, come on, fucking take me on, and then, and then, but you're also like braced for attack, and you don't actually. But then again, like taunt itself is almost feels like an action. So you're again, you're gaining something with your defense. Yeah, like uh, if we if we replace defend and cover with taunt <laughs> then we convince all the enemies to attack the fighter as opposed to everybody else now that would be a funny way to do it because you're you're preventing damage to your mages not by having them prepare for the attack themselves but by having the fighter step forward and be like come at me bro i'm ripped yeah this actually is a pretty solid technique in dungeons and dragons when you're playing tabletop because there's an actual person playing the bad guys and if your DM isn't, like, boring and just, like, purely, like, well, how can we kill the players? You know, they'll be like, oh, you're you're goading them on, you know, like, yeah, of course these guys are going to get pissed off at them instead of the mages, you know? And, and there's also certain limits to that, because maybe the DM could be like, well, no, this guy's actually really smart and actually knows that it doesn't matter how much the fighter is waggling his dick around. Like, <laughs> we got to kill that mage first or we're all fucking dead. So, you know, uh, but emulating that kind of intelligence in, in, in a game is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. The fighter insults the, the lich's mother. The lich charges the fighter. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense unless you have a game that has, like, extreme priority. Like, just an asshole game. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just any mage, 100%. Kill them first. Yeah, my favorite example of that is uh, Lunar, the Silver Star story, where when you fight the big bad Galleon, he can teleport. So your formation is worthless because he's going to teleport into the middle of you guys and nuke you all. And the first thing he's going to do when he teleports behind you is he's going to kill the healer. <laughs> Gosh, it's been so long. Wasn't that a standard... I thought that was a standard... Uh turn you know lined up on two sides system i mean i haven't played it since it came out ages and ages ago no lunar so. uh you you had like half the screen as a grid um that you could position people on and there was a couple things like there was like the dragon in the sewer where if you were up close the dragon used an ability called fire press and do a lot of damage to anyone up close um, but Ramus and Luna had crossbows, so they could hang back and let Alex take all the damage. Or you could have Alex move back, and then he would just randomly, you know, lunge at somebody. The other thing about that game is you could only reposition, if I'm remembering right, by using defend. Because if you used an attack, you'd run up to somebody, you'd attack, you'd run back to your spot. But if you wanted to move people around, you would hit defend, and then you could, like, walk them around the screen and then stop them. It was kind of like Mega Man Battle Network, but not because of how you can move around and how stuff worked. But that's the, the closest approximation, because I can't remember anything else like it. 
right. So you all played Saga Frontier, right? This kind of brings up an interesting thought about... I just think the, the 2D plane RPG is something that wasn't done that much, but it was interesting when they did it. I'm looking at images on Google to remind myself of how that game worked. Are you um, talking about the Tales of games? Because... I have not played any of the Tales of games. I'm talking about uh, Saga Frontier. It's a PlayStation 1 game. Uh, mm -hmm. It was the actual sequels to the Final Fantasy Legend games. Yep. So yeah. they had all the, like, monsters could eat meat and change and uh, the robots that I think had upgrades and stuff like that. But all the stuff was on a 2D plane that like your your characters would surround the enemies and depending on where the enemies actually were like you had actual like all the functions of the game would actually even though it wasn't shown in 2d it was basically like a uh, bird's eye view looking down and your characters could like have like circle attacks or like line attacks and like depending on where they were you could hit multiple targets maybe but it was really kind of random which, that was always a weird system, and, and usually, eventually, you started figuring out a way to game the system, and then you became super OP. The combo attacks in, in that game were pretty sick once you started getting them. Is it kind of like Last Remnant in the sense where you don't have a whole lot of direct control over what happens, but you have a lot of indirect control over your unit's position? I think, actually, it's less than that. Like, you don't really have much control at all where where your characters start off. And they don't actually move throughout combat. You just have have to be lucky that where they, they randomly plop down the bad guys in the middle, if you have line attacks, that there are a couple enemies that line up in front of your character that has the line attacks. Ah. Um, it's a, a little bit of a weird concept. You know what also had the, the 2D sort of combat system is chrono trigger did in fact actually saga frontiers combat is probably most similar to chrono trigger if you imagined your characters didn't move they just were plopped down and then you had to try and work with the your spells that had like lines or whatever and then you also had your combo attacks like your antipods and stuff like that but you had a lot more choice in that chrono trigger you didn't actually get to choose where your characters were going of course hmm all right. Let's see here. What would be a good way to wrap this thing up? I got lost. What happened? <laughs> we're, we're talking about uh, the RPGs from like the SNES PS1 era, where it wasn't a true tactical grid-based system, but there was movement of the characters. All right. Yeah. I so we talked about attacking, we talked about defending. And what a great podcast we got. Um, <laughs> what a great battle system attacking and defending you know what Yeah, I, I'm fine with this I'm fine with going in depth on two things cause... the next topic would be items oh, I was going no, to say, no say actually and that's kind of weird right Item. yeah that, that would be a good topic it's because everyone has this feeling of oh gotta save it for the last boss and then when it's finally the last boss they don't use it because they have too many or whatever master ball Oh, no, actually, not the last sentence he's just said. But... What's your guys' favorite item? Mine's a potion. Yeah, there's a good range of discussion over, like, how do you do items right? Yeah, because, like, no one wants to buy them, but no one wants to go look for them. And if you get them all the time in battle, it kind of reduces their value anyways. Yeah. Why would you buy it? Yeah, you, like, it reduces their value, but also people never use them at all. Because they all want to save it for the last boss or a hard boss or something. By the time they get to that point, they can just steamroll the boss without yeah. items. That is Pokemon red and blue and yellow. Maybe even gold and silver. Like, those games. Like, I remember uh, getting to the Elite Four. Now, that's the only place you actually would need items because it's fucking, like, four gym leaders in a row. And you don't get to go heal, so you need the items. But I remember I was like, damn, I'm fucking rich for a 10-year-old. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So, so uh, we'll do our goodbyes. I'll go first, and then the screen shows me, Robin, Mono, Brad, so we'll do it in that order. Um, 
So thank you all for listening to the RPG Maker General podcast or the RPG MGP. This is Cody. We'll see you all next time. This is Mono. Guy Robin. Oh, I'm going to go soon. No, we just said what order. <laughs> God damn it. I'm sorry. I got super excited. Okay. <laughs> we start again, Cody. Fuck. We have a lot say, of editing. <laughs> this is Robin. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is Blue Sky Robin, and I got to go to sleep soon. Jeez. Thanks for having me, Cody. Of course. That was me. Yeah. Yes, Mono. <laughs> okay, keep that in. Um, this is Mono. <laughs> Good luck on your games and have fun in life. Bye. And uh, this is Devil's Avocado for Evil Guacamole Gaming. If you've got a game that you want to get played on my channel, just, just let me know. I, I love playing indie games. It, that shit's good. <laughs> <laughs>